Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight I have a creepy collection of haunted house stories for you to listen to, so buckle up and let the darkness take control. I lived in an apartment, in this old, beautiful house in New Orleans. I lived with my boyfriend at the time, and we got this insane deal. It was $600 to rent a massive, stunning apartment with hardwood floors and a huge ceiling. My boyfriend worked in the oil field and would often go offshore leaving me alone. 99% of the things that happened was when I was alone. One day, I got out of the shower and the mirror was fogged up. I leaned over while I was brushing my teeth and when I looked up, the mirror was wiped in a circle where my face was. This happened only a few times. It was wiped away where my face was when I looked up from brushing my teeth each time. But when it did happen, it happened in the same way every time. While I was sleeping, I often heard things crashing, and also often heard footsteps in the attic. My boyfriend also heard the steps in the attic and went to check it out. No one was up there. I came home from getting groceries, put on the gas stove, and got a feeling of being watched, all looked up. From two to three seconds of me coming in and putting the groceries down, I look up, and all of the cabinets were suddenly open 90 degrees. I closed the doors, and tried to recreate it happening, which it couldn't. I brushed it off, went back to put groceries away, and got another creepy feeling. I looked up, and all the cabinet doors were open again, at a perfect 90 degree angle, while my back was turned. All the burners turned on, full blast. Every night, we heard footsteps or someone walking slowly in high heels up and down the hallway for hours. The apartment next to us was a huge mirror image of ours, and the walls were thin. My boyfriend thought that the guy next to us had a lady over and I said, no woman would wear high heels on hardwood floors, walking back and forth. They would have taken them off. Only a man who has a fetish to wear heels would do that. Turns out our neighbour worked as a nurse, doing the night shift, and wasn't home at those hours anyway. I was going to sleep one day, but I was scared, so I left the hallway light on. I heard the footsteps, and was too scared to sleep. I looked up, and saw an evil being, a man, but he looked like half a man, half a monster, walk into the doorway of the room, stop, and turn towards me. I had never been so scared, I was paralysed with fear. He came into the room, stood at the left side of the bed and sat down. I felt like I was being electrocuted the entire time he was looking at me. It felt like an eternity. I think I passed out from fear. I woke up in the morning and panicked. I felt like it happened, but kept trying to convince myself that it was a nightmare. One night my boyfriend and I were watching a movie in the dark. We heard the sound of the wood floor creaking, and we both looked over to see an evil looking, older, ugly woman glaring at us. We both looked at each other. I knew by looking at him that he saw it too. That was the day I went from thinking I was paranoid to living in full fear. The most terrifying part? Our dishwasher broke, and these handymen came to install the new one. One guy said to the other, Hurry up, I hate being in this apartment. I asked him to explain why, and he said he'll only talk to me outside. He said that a serial killer lived in the apartment and killed women who were all the same age who looked similar in the French Quarter. He was a cross-dresser and walked up and down the hallway in heels. The FBI found a headless body and searched the entire property for the head but never found it. They looked in the attic and found traces of him living up there at some point. In case you're curious, 2835 General Pershing, New Orleans, is the address. 
My dad and I flip houses for a living. We do everything. So house renovations can take anywhere from a few months to a year and up. Here's what happened to us in this 100 plus year old farmhouse in Northwest New Jersey about three years ago. This old farmhouse was beautiful, but extremely run down. It had sat vacant prior to us purchasing it for 15 years. There was evidence that squatters had been there at some point. The house had good bones, as they say, so it wasn't really worth tearing down and starting from scratch. The first part of our job is the cleanup and demolition. I noticed that every house has its own vibe and energy. However, this old farmhouse was different. It was four floors, including basement and attic, and any time you were downstairs on the main floor or kitchen, living room slash office area, it felt fine, even normal. But when you went upstairs, it was different. There was a heaviness up there. I would announce every time I came into the house, hey, it's just me. Is it cool if I do such and such? I would also announce myself every time I came into the house downstairs with a, hey, how you doing today? My dad would look at me like I was crazy, because I never did this anywhere else. I don't know why I did it here. I just felt the need to, like a deep itch in my brain pleading me to say it. So I did, each and every time. Within the first few days of the clean out and demo, my dad had found something disturbing. In the master bedroom upstairs, there was a small closet with a light in it. Hanging on the inside of the closet door, on a coat hook, was a bloody dog collar. There were weird symbols spray painted only in this closet. Something looked like it had been burned in a pile on the floor of the closet. I refused to touch it and got extremely upset at the sight of the dog collar. Furious even. Why would anyone do something to a poor animal like this? I was so bothered my dad told me to go home for the day, and I did. It makes me sick thinking about the sick people who would do something like that. My dad and other co-workers cleaned it out. Also, the light in that closet, we could never get it to work. We do minor electrical repairs and couldn't figure it out. Even had a master electrician come, and they couldn't get it to work either. New light fixture, new wiring, knew everything. Nothing worked. But when we had finished cleaning out the living quarters, we decided to work on the attic and basement. The basement was okay. Honestly, the bottom half of the house was fine. But the attic was terrible. I couldn't bring myself to go up there. Not to be an ass. I worked on the other floors of the house. My dad understood, without me even having to explain which speaks volumes because he's a real skeptic. One day I had to hold the flashlight for my dad while he was in the attic. I stood on the stairs with only my head and upper torso sticking into the attic space. The light wouldn't work up there either. This attic had one of those pull downs from the ceiling slash foldable ladders. It was located in the hallway between the master bedroom, second bedroom and only bathroom. The second we opened it, a rank smell hit us hard in the face. Death, for sure. Something must have died up there. There were those large black flies that seemed to swarm to rot and death everywhere. To say it was an infestation of flies is an understatement. I stood on the ladder, nearly falling multiple times from the ferocious swatting of these demon bugs. My dad looked everywhere for the cause of the flies for days and couldn't find anything. Before we sold the house, we finally got the flies to go away. This was after months of trying. However, when the new owner chose to rent the house out, the flies kept coming back. To this day, almost three years later, exterminators and pest control have been called, but the flies always return. The master bedroom had something else happen after the closet was cleaned up. I talked to my dad into burying the dog collar. There were four windows in the master, 
two windows on the north wall and two on the west. The north wall windows one day suddenly had two bats on them. They were somehow wedged between the glass and the screen of this old window. We needed to replace all the windows and we tried everything to free the bats without hurting them. We worked during the day, so bats being nocturnal, we figured it explained why they never moved during the day. When we would come the next day, they seemed to have moved overnight, so we knew they were alive. These poor bats had me seriously fretting. Any dead bugs I found during the cleanup, I would put on this windowsill hoping they would eat them. I know it's weird, but I'm a die-hard animal lover. I appreciate they were stuck, and it was killing me to see them like that. It made no logical sense how they got there either. Also, it was early summer, so they weren't hibernating either. My dad and I decided to get a ladder and try from the outside of the house. He finally got it so the bats could undoubtedly get out. The bats never moved from that window screen for weeks. Then one day they were gone. I thought for a long time my dad had discovered they were dead and disposed of them not to upset me. He promises he didn't do that, and after weeks of them moving barely inches, they had indeed left of their own volition. We finished the house and sold it. The new owner rented it out to tenants. The tenants would move in, stay for a month or two, break lease and leave. This happened four times since we finished. After each move, we were contracted to come and do a fresh coat of paint, deep clean, patch up a hole or two or fix anything else that needed. But the feeling in the house never changed. I should also mention we did inform the new owner of the weirdness prior to purchase. My dad is a skeptical guy and has no explanation for any of it. My dad also now announces himself any time we go into the house. We met every tenant that lived there at some point in their rental line. They all seemed like normal people, not the type to break leases for no reason. I feel like the house needs a cleanse or something. To whoever did something to that poor dog, may you reap what you sow. In the early 1990s, I used to work doing crime scene cleanup. I would attend all manner of things, from accidental deaths, suicides, fire deaths, explosions, homicides, unattended deaths, and pretty much any messed up situation that could happen inside of a home or structure. One of my first calls when I started doing this work was around 1993. It was a really rich, fancy home. The home was located in a very wealthy area of Los Angeles, up in the hills, and it was a huge home with a lot of land surrounding it. This was the first time I ever saw an elevator in a home. I never met the homeowners or actually any representative from the person who owned the home, as all the paperwork was done via fax. I think it was owned by an Asian family, but couldn't be 100% sure. I only thought this at the time due to the furnishings and things inside the home. It was pretty much emptied out, most of the personal contents prior to our arrival, so I didn't see any family pictures on the wall. It was huge so big you could get lost inside. Up to this point, I have never been inside a multi-level home, much less one with so many bedrooms, game room, indoor pool, bar, dens, family rooms, basement, and I think a six-car garage if I remember correctly. Anyway, we started work on this one late in the evening. It was once a crime scene, but by the time it was released to us, there were other damages that I couldn't explain. I assumed that the person was killed in the master bedroom, as there were some signs of trauma and some bullet holes in the bathroom, shower and surrounding walls. There wasn't that much blood, as I think the person must have perished in the huge walk-in shower. What was odd was that I didn't know if the shooter turned on all the water faucets in the house, because there was water damage all through it, kind of like the Home Alone Wet Bandit stuff. There were areas where we had to remove wet drywall, wet carpet, baseboards, wood flooring, wet ceilings and cabinets. Since this was all over this huge house, and my crew at the time were just about five of us split up doing different areas. This house was so big that you couldn't hear each other from the different areas even if you were screaming. 
but we all carried these old Motorola walkie-talkies that allowed us to communicate from each other for miles. One of the issues we were dealing with was that in certain areas of the house the lights were off. I think prior to us coming out, an electrician shut off all the power in different areas because electrical components got wet. We all decided that using the elevator wouldn't be a good idea and just used the stairs and walked through the different areas of the home in complete darkness. We thought about using our generator, but the house was too big and there were too many rooms, so we just ran extension cords with lights to areas we needed but it still didn't light up enough of the house. I remember two of our guys were working on the upstairs, maybe the fourth floor, where the murder actually took place. Another guy was working by himself, in what appeared to be a bar slash indoor nightclub area, removing wet cabinets and flooring. Another guy was working on this huge walk-in closet, tearing out wet carpet and drywall from floor to ceiling. I started working in a basement area, and there were some ceiling and walls that needed to be removed. This job was going to be an all-nighter, because of the vast and multiple areas that the damage was. Everything that we removed was damaged, and it was a long trek to remove it from the house and drive down to our trucks, adding to the time it took. So let's get to the creepy part. Imagine being in this huge home where a murder took place for one, but as we got through the night working, we began hearing and experiencing things. Our old radios would do a beep beep chime when someone was about to say something over the air. Since it was only our company that had these radios, it wasn't random interference from outside sources, and we hadn't experienced such things before. But as the night went on, and we were working, we kept getting alerts that someone was about to talk. So I and others would drop what we were doing and listen for a bip, like someone was going to say something but no one spoke. Maybe one of the guys was fooling with the radio. As I was making my way with a trash can full of debris out of the basement, as I didn't want to take my trash too heavy to carry out, I made several loads. It was a summer night, so getting out in the cool summer air was a benefit. One of these trips, I had to go up the stairs from the basement and down a long hallway. I believe to my right was an opening to a large living room type room, and to my left were some windows to the outside, but further down was the door that I needed to take to the exit and take my debris out. On one of the last trips the light went out. I got some light from the moon outside, but to my right the rest of the house seemed unnaturally dark. As I make my way back to the truck, I grabbed a small flashlight in case it happened again. After a while of working in the basement area, one of my guys comes up to me and starts chatting. I can tell he's nervous, and he starts on me saying, wouldn't it be better if we worked together? That way we can finish up areas quicker. I could tell he didn't want to be by himself, so I agreed, and I honestly knew how he felt. It was about 1am, and we decided to take a break and meet in the pool table room, and eat. We started exchanging stories about the place, mostly on how cool it was, but also creepy. We all experienced random whole sections of the house losing power, only for it to come back on again in a different section. The guys that were on the upstairs part talked about hearing music, but couldn't find the source. I asked who the dumbass was who kept hitting the talk button. No one did. We started coming to the realization the job wasn't going to be completed tonight, and it would be a two to three day job. We talked about our options, and one of them was since it was nearly two at that point, was that we should work a few more hours, sleep there, go up and get showered and go back to the office. I for one, wasn't into the idea of sleeping in that house, and overruled, and said we'll work a couple more hours and call it a day. The following day, we already had another job on the books, so we got home and rested a little, then back at it. We got back to the big, fancy house at 3pm, 
and decided to work as long as we could and finishing up the following day. That evening we sent one of the guys for pizza and kept working so there would be two of us paired and when the pizza came, we would break and eat up and then rest back to it. After we ate our dinner and once again back in the pool table room, we're just relaxing as the work and distances in the house are taking a toll on us. We decide the best case, so none of us gets too tired lugging the trash, we would split that duty that one guy would go and then the other guy would go and so on. Almost everyone hears music playing at some point in the house. I heard it walking down from the kitchen area to the long hallway, but it sounded like it was coming from another location in the house. Another guy heard it coming from upstairs in the master bedroom area, but when you got up there, it sounded like it was coming from elsewhere. One of our guys called us over the radio as he was making his way back from debris out to the trucks and asked if someone was over in the kitchen pantry room. We all say no and ask why. He said the door is open and it wasn't before. We joked that he was just probably hungry. It was around midnight at this point, and I was working one of the extra bedrooms that had its own private bathroom. This area was also down a long hallway that had a few other rooms and ended in a den type area. I was with one of my guys and we both jumped as we heard a loud bang. It sounded like something big and flat hit the ground, kind of like if you knocked over a large piece of furniture and I got on the radio and checked on my guys thinking they broke something and everyone said no, they hadn't broken anything and no one else heard it. My co-worker and I sure did, so we go down the hallway and look around, maybe a picture fell off the wall or something, but there's nothing. On one of the last trips from that area, my co-worker took the debris to the truck and I was left alone in the waiting room for him to return and the lights go out. I'm sitting here in this room, in the dark, alone, in the waiting room for him to return. All down the hallway is pitch black for some reason. There's not even enough light from the moon. He took our flashlight with him, and I start making my way out of the room down to the den area that led to a larger open room, from there to a living room and dining room, then onto a kitchen, and I start to see light from the pool table room, so I start to make my way over there, and then those lights go out. I get on my radio and call out that all the lights on the second floor were out, and I start to hear someone walking towards me, coming from the living room area, and thinking it was a co-worker, I call out to him but get no reply. I stood there in silence. Then I start to see a flashlight moving around and it's another co-worker. He said that in his area the lights were on, and he heard me yelling for him. I didn't yell, I'd only called on the radio. Just as we were talking the lights came back on, my co-worker with the trash can and the flashlight comes back in. The last and final day we go out to finish, I cancelled our schedule so that we could finish the job in the light of day, no more evenings or middle of the night work in that house. After we were done, we started exchanging stories about it, and one of the guys swears he heard me yell for him. I promise I didn't because I was frozen. The lights turning off and on were everywhere. It didn't feel like it was an electrical issue, more like someone was messing with us. One guy said he went to use one of the only functioning restrooms and saw someone walk by when he opened the door, and it wasn't any of us. One of our guys claimed he heard footsteps in another room. We all heard the music, and one thing about the music is we all heard different type. I heard what sounded like classical or Chopin. Others said it sounded like country music but he couldn't make out any of the lyrics. And yet another heard what sounded like mariachi music. We were all very confused as to the events of those days. I'm not terribly fanciful. Neither is my dad. When my siblings and I were little, we all thought we saw a ghost in my sister's room after recently moving into the house. We were all younger than seven at the time. My sister always felt ill at ease in the room, 
to the point she cried whenever my parents made her sleep in her own room for many years. She specifically remembers one time when she was sleeping, and then someone, who she thought was my dad, carrying her downstairs and putting her in the living room armchair. She specifically remembers that she kind of woke up and was angry that my dad brought her downstairs. She woke up in the chair the next morning by my dad, who asked me why she was sleeping downstairs and said he never brought her downstairs. As far as ghost origin, the house is old, so there could be stories we don't know. We knew there was a Native American tribe in the area, and we know the house used to be on an orchard. We also know in the 70s, a resident of the house left angry after a fight, zoomed his car down the driveway, went over the curb, and hit and killed a young boy across the street who was playing on one of those toy fake lawnmowers. We also know the house was built in the 1870s, and when my parents renovated the upstairs bathroom, they found a letter that was sent to the local church nailed inside the wall. My parents have that letter framed at the house. This event happened yesterday. My mum and dad were home, and my dad was in the attic. He went down to the second floor and into my parents' room when he saw a movement move on the other side of the room that leads to the hallway of my sister's room. It was a figure, in what he thought was my mum's pyjamas, go from my sister's room area to my brother's room slash bathroom, right in the hallway. He called my mum's name, nothing. So we went and checked out the hallway, then heard my mum downstairs. He did not see anything in any of the rooms. He went downstairs and my mum said he looked visibly spooked. The scariest part of the story for me is that it happened to my dad, who was not one for striking fancies, and he swears he saw something move, wearing some sort of pattern, move across in his line of vision. My great-grandfather, great-grandmother, their four kids and dog, moved into this old farmhouse in rural central Illinois. I never personally encountered the farmhouse, as all of this occurred in the late 70s. Here are the real, terrifying encounters my family members had in this house. When they first moved in, a woman came up to them at the grocery store. She told them that their dog would die, and the house was evil, and that bad things would happen to them. Basically some Amityville horror kind of stuff. They brushed it off and thought she was just trying to scare them because she wanted the house. Note, my great-grandma had a previous husband whom she had five of her six kids with. Only four of those kids ever lived in the farmhouse. My grandma, my great-grandma's daughter and fourth child was the result of an affair with the great-grandpa who's in this story. That's a whole different story but the bloodline thing is crucial to the story. After the lady had told them all of the things that would happen to them, every single thing happened. They honestly thought she was a witch who cursed them because of how accurate she was on what would happen. Not long after they moved in, their dog died from being hit by a car. After that, my great-grandpa turned mean. So mean all the kids hated him, even some of the adults. He went crazy. My grandma wouldn't leave the house. It's as if it had a gravitational pull on her. They believed that my great-grandpa and grandma were possessed by the house. My aunt Carrie, the youngest child, swears up and down she saw Dracula in the house. To elaborate, all of the adults were playing cards downstairs. My aunt was younger at the time and was playing near the hallway. When she looked up, she saw what she described as Dracula looking back at her. She was hysterical. My great-grandpa actually had to slap her in the face just so that she would calm down. No surprise they didn't believe her. Another incident is when my great-grandpa yelled for all the kids to come downstairs. I guess there was a door that led to the second floor stairs that you entered and exited out of. The kids couldn't find the door. It vanished. My great-grandpa was getting impatient and yelling at them. He couldn't hear them at all. 
They said they were on the other side shouting, and they couldn't find the door. Something else similar happened to my great-grandma's niece. She had gone upstairs and walked past where she thought the kids were playing. They were being so loud, she opened and stood at the doorway and went to yell at them. But of course there was no one there. I know how cliché. But when she went downstairs and described to my great-grandparents which room and door, they told her, There's no room there. It's a door that leads to the outside. It's all boarded up, so there's no way you could have opened it. So if she actually had have opened the door and tried to walk through the room, she would have fallen from the second story of the house. She was so freaked out that she left and never came back after that. She swore there was a room and door there. The house obviously liked to play with your mind. My uncle took a picture outside the house with his hands and kind of posed. When he got them back from the developer, they said they needed to show him something. In the proof of the pictures, his posed hands were being held down by something. I wish I could find the picture to add to this. Here's where more bloodlines come in. My great-grandma's ex-husband and baby daddy married her new husband's daughter and had two children. So it was a messed up family circle. Since they were all intertwined, my grandma's ex-husband slash stepson-in-law and stepdaughter slash her kid's stepmom slash stepsister would stay with them sometimes. The first and last time they stayed in the house was when they were asleep on the second floor. Some family were downstairs playing cards when they heard a bed squeaking violently. Now, you know what they thought when that was happening, and they were a little disturbed. They tried to ignore it, but it was non-stop. One of the adults went to tell the ex-husband and his new wife to keep it down when they knocked and there was no answer. The adult reluctantly opened the door, and the ex-husband and his new wife were sound asleep and fully clothed. The next morning when the ex and new wife were told about what happened, they slept in their camper for the rest of their visit. There was also this recurring red spot that no matter how much you scrubbed it, it would always come back. I'm sure there's much more stuff, but these are the most recurring things I've heard. Unfortunately, the only person who could tell you anything she's experienced in that house was my grandma, who has since passed on. Years later, they found out that my great-grandma's oldest daughter's husband's uncle actually took his own life in the basement. He had done that years before they moved in. My family only stayed there because they were not financially stable enough to leave, and after they finally moved out, a new family moved in. The new family stayed there for a week, and stayed in their RV for the rest of the time till they could find a new house. After that family moved, the farmhouse burnt down. I'm not really sure if the house caught on fire, or if it was burnt down on purpose. I've drove past where it was located many times. It's all cornfield now. The old grain silos that sat with it are still there, but that's all. I'll wonder what happened to make the farmhouse so evil. My boyfriend had a haunted bedsit flat. Everything, including the kitchen area and bed slash lounge, was in one room. He used to go home from work to all the cooker rings on full blast or being woken by the iron cord and plug swinging violently on the wall bracket. The TV also blew up when we were watching it. And one night, that was the final nail in the coffin, when he was getting off to sleep and the cutlery drawer in the kitchen was pulled out from under the sink so quickly, the entire contents were thrown all over the floor. Safe to say, he no longer makes that his residence. This all started when I was seven years old, living in an old house. We caught an orb on camera, and it wasn't a dust speck because it was moving irregularly. I would always hear things talking to me in a loud whisper, and one of the only experiences that truly terrified me are as follows. I would always have a radio on at night, and a commercial came on. This so-called commercial was filled with people screaming, in a deep, droning voice that said things that I couldn't understand. 
It could have been just a horror movie, but I'd never heard it from anyone else. Something else I learned from my mum that happened when I was at school is that my toys would be moved from upstairs in my room to the bottom of the stairs. I also remember my brother sleeping in my bed with me lots of times, but whenever I talked about it, neither my mum or brother remembers whatever's happening. And I don't know if this counts, but when I walked past this one certain house, Something inside me was telling me to never look at it. I did never acknowledge the house. The house had a bunch of religious things on the porch, and it always gave me an evil vibe. Another night, I was looking out my window and under the streetlight, when I saw a little girl dressed in a white nightgown, and when I looked up, she disappeared. Then, we moved out of that house, and moved to a different town with my mum's boyfriend and this kind of thing took off in terms of spiritual encounters. I would be laying in bed, and again, I'd hear the whispers yell. It was always happening each night, and one night I was so scared I ran into my mom's room. I had to go into the basement, and all the while the voices talking to me were getting louder and louder and more aggressive. I would be laying in bed, and my bed would shake violently. And when I went to my brother because I was kind of scared, his bed would start to shake. Then the water faucet would drip, and I'd go out and check and it was dry in the sink. Another experience I had is when we were watching a movie in the living room, when I saw something pass in front of the window. I asked them if they saw that, and none of them did. Then, when we moved out, we moved to my grandpa's. It's a very old house, it's been in our family since the 1800s, so there's lots of history and probably spirits. I'd hear something crawling in my vent, and I'd hear something move like someone was walking in the attic. This happened years after we first lived there, but it still happened at my grandpa's house. I had my door locked, and I heard a big wheels toy roll up to my door. My door then opened, and something crawled into bed with me. Another experience was when I got up to go to the bathroom and something was on the other side of the door preventing me from opening it. I had grown used to the paranormal, so I pushed as hard as I could, got the door open, but something slammed shut against it. I didn't try to open it again. And just the other day I was gaming with my door open and I saw something white approach my door frame. I looked at it and it disappeared. My cats were in the room, so maybe that's what prevented it from coming in. In another town we lived in, the dishwater started up by itself, and I saw some black figure on top of my fan blades, and a music box started playing by itself. My closet door had also slammed shut by itself on multiple occasions. In a different town, I had two different rooms in our apartment over the time we lived there. In my first room, I was lying in bed when I felt a drop of water on my forehead. I touched my forehead. Dry. I touched the ceiling fan. Dry. Then I was getting water on another night. It was around 2am, and I heard my mother call out for me. But it was so obviously not my mother. Something about her voice was off. I stopped in my tracks, not leaving my room, and saw a black figure slink back into her room. In the other room I was in, I was laying in bed, and I heard something from the dark part of my room call my name. Another time when I was walking past my room, I saw a figure walk from my closet to my doorway. Then, in another room, there were fairy lights that could only be turned on by flipping the switch on, and none of us went into the room out of respect for the girl who used it. The lights were on at different times, and I heard my cats play with their toys in the living room. The only thing is, that I had all the cats in the room with me. Another time I was playing the Ouija board with my friends on Halloween. One of my friends heard me say something to him, but I didn't say anything. And at a different time, I was driving home with my mum, and I saw the same little girl in a white nightgown in front of the neighbour's lawn, in broad daylight. All in all, I've had quite a few terrifying experiences with spirits. They've always stopped bugging me when I ask them to, but they always come back. None of my other family members experienced this, 
and I've always been able to hear and see things others cannot. 